What's going on guys? Matt Listy I here, AKA Matthias, and I wanted to talk to you all. I had made a video recently about installing a oil pressure gauge. And that brought up a couple of things where I had some people reach out to me and they were asking about oil pressure and just kind of what, like how do you know what to monitor? What's the purpose of monitoring it? That made me want to start doing a new segment that's kind of a tech talk thing. Essentially go over questions that people have during videos to be able to answer them and kind of inform people and keep you guys educated, bring a little bit more to the table. So um, in doing that, I guess this is our first one. Uh, we're gonna talk all about oil pressure, hopefully answer any question you had or ever possibly could think up about oil pressure. First little bit of this, why is oil pressure important? Without pressure, you're not going to be able to get oil into the tight little spaces, the tight tolerances that you have inside an engine to be able to prevent metal on metal contact. And that is a big no-no. That's what causes most of the engine failures that you would possibly deal with unless you're you know, sending a shh. I don't wanna say that word. Unless you're making like a, a stupid amount of power and you like send a rod to the moon. Uh, oil pressure is a pretty common failure point on engines when they do fail. Oil should actually be creating a pressurized, um, basically spacing in between things to where you're, you're riding on a pressurized bit of oil. That way the parts are not actually touching, you don't have metal on metal contact uh, and premature wear. So that's kind of what happens with that. The other thing as far as like monitoring oil pressure, uh, if you're monitoring oil pressure and I would throw in temp as well, but we'll get into that later. Uh, it gives you a lot more insight over what you need to be doing with the engine, what you might not be doing correctly, like maintenance wise or oil selection, a, a bunch of things. So it gives you a whole lot of control over what you're doing with your engine and the best way to utilize the components you have in your engine. So one thing that a lot of people need to understand, and I'm sure if you watch anything else on this, I'd hope they touch base on this, but oil pumps do not create pressure. Uh, oil pressure is actually going to be created as a byproduct of restriction. So it's gonna be the same thing. Uh, like a lot of people say, it's like a hose. And if you have a hose and you just got it spraying water out, it's not going to create a lot of pressure behind it. But if you put your thumb over it and you're holding it, that pressure is going to build because you're creating that restriction. And that is going to cause the volume to turn into pressure out the nozzle. And that's going to be the same thing that everything inside the engine is doing. Uh, that is why engines have very specifically sized oiling ports uh, and galleys and everything like that. Now that I've kind of got that out of the way, I do want to touch base on um, kind of general values for oil pressure because one of the big questions I got asked, I had like three or four people write me um, saying like, what should my oil pressure be at? And what's not safe? What's too low? A uh, general rule of thumb, anything above 20 PSI at idle is safe. Um, and, and that's kind of the general consensus on that. The other rule of thumb, as RPMs go up, so does oil pressure. So if your RPMs are going up and your oil pressure is staying the same or going down, you probably have a problem. So another thing I want to touch base on is, uh, and this is going back to the topic I mentioned just a little bit ago, uh, temperature um, and how temperature and oil viscosity both play a role in oil pressure. Uh, that would be the importance of adding an oil temp gauge because when you have a thicker viscosity fluid, it's not going to flow as much. And that goes back to the restriction thing. Let's say your oil is like water and you're trying to force it through a small hole by putting a bunch of pressure behind it or a bunch of volume through the hole uh, you're going to wind up with a decent amount of pressure and at some point, you know, you're going to be able to push through it. If instead of like a watery like substance, you have like syrup, it's going to be way harder to force syrup through that hole. And that's going to be the same thing. I, I don't know if I look funny on this or not. <laughs> that's going to be the same thing um, that you would encounter with thick or thin oils. Uh, that is why you'll notice when you first start your car up and your car is cold. I don't mean it's cold outside. I mean the engine is cold. It hasn't been ran in a while. Your oil is going to be cold, so it's going to be more viscous. And in that, you're going to see most likely when you first start the car on a cold start, 
your oil pressure is going to be through the roof. And that's because the oil hasn't warmed up yet to the point where it is thinned out and able to follow through everything properly. I wrote out notes for myself so I wouldn't get distracted, but I'm still getting distracted. It's not my fault. Give me those pichos. Where are we at? Uh, okay, perfect. Don't worry about it, we're back. Common causes for oil pressure being too high or too low. Oil pressure being too high can be caused by anything from clogged oil galleys, uh, the oiling holes, you could have a clogged filter, a um, few different things there. And a lot of that can come back to like poorly maintained cars, uh, stuff in the fluids, they weren't changed enough so they built up sludge. Um, anything like that is normally kind of root causes for that. You can have kind of a simple where you're getting a little bit too high of pressure and that can be due to running like the wrong type of oil, you're running too viscous oil. You'd have an improperly sized pump. So that, that would more have to do with cars where they have like multiple pump options available and you're trying to run the biggest, highest volume pump you can uh, on something where the tolerances are too tight and you really wouldn't need that uh, high flow of an oil pump. Most uh, newer style pumps, I mean, I, I can't even think off the top of my head of an oil pump that doesn't have this, but they have what's called a pressure relief valve. Any of these oil pumps, they're going to have pressure relief valves that are set to open up when they reach a certain pressure to then divert oil back to the inlet side so it doesn't overpressurize the system and that'll drop uh, the system pressure overall. So if you had an issue where uh, it was sticking closed, um, which does happen, you can have where it's not opening up to relieve pressure and then it's just pumping as much as it can in there and over building pressure, which can lead to seal issues and a bunch of other problems. If you have oil pressure that's too low, um, that can be due to essentially the exact opposite problems. First thing you wanna check is your oil level because if oil level is too low, you could have a pressure issue sucking up air or it cavitates the pump, anything like that. You can run into low oil pressure. So that would be like if you had a clogged oil pickup, you could have, like I said, the opposite problem. So viscosity of oil could be too low for your system requirements. Or if you built like a custom engine and you have really loose tolerances on there and you'd want the thicker oil, higher pressure, um, you could be running the wrong oil in that case. Uh, the other thing that low oil pressure can be indicative of is worn internal engine components. And that just goes back to um, the system when it's pumping into it, obviously you have very tight clearances on there and you're trying to pump the oil through it through the little oil holes uh, that lead to that. And when you don't have those, say you spun a bearing or something, but somehow the thing's still together and running, you're gonna get drastically low oil pressure uh, obviously if that's the case from a lot of other issues, but also because you have a giant opening now where a bearing should be, so the oil is going to have way too many places to go. It's not properly in check. You could have the pump gears that have failed uh, or other issues with the gears of the pump itself to where it's not able to get oil in there. That leads back to cavitation, all of that as well. Um, or you could have the exact opposite issue with the relief valve, the relief valve stuck open. Uh, so it is constantly recirculating back to the inlet and it cannot build oil pressure. So final thoughts and just a little recap. Uh, monitoring oil pressure and temp can give you a lot of control over your oiling system and its overall needs. So that is very important to monitor. It's less important to the general public, uh, more important to people that really want that extra control over seeing what their engine's doing uh, and being able to see kind of the little subtle changes they need to make to get their engine running as efficiently as possible. From a maintenance side, more to uh, the general public, it allows you to locate an issue before it becomes a bigger problem and might be able to buy you a little time on a failing engine or anything like that. Pichos. Are you guys getting this? <laughs> Are you guys getting any of the things I said? Is this making sense? Let's just shout them out, name them. Oil pressure, oil pump, volume, oil pressure, caused by restriction. Hotter the oil, lower the pressure. Colder the oil, higher the pressure. Less restriction, 
lower pressure. More restriction, higher pressure. Water hose. I'm out. Here's a good peach hose. Get pressured. Oh, fuck. <laughs>